Hello, I'm Claudia Myatt. Welcome to my YouTube videos. Today I'm looking at sketching pens to show you the ones I use and how I use them and how useful they can be at outdoor sketching and getting a quick impression um, just in line or, as you can see from this book, occasionally I'll add colour as well. That's always an option. Sometimes I'll do that later. But it gives you a chance to just capture something on location without worrying about correcting doesn't matter if it goes wrong and you can just capture things that are moving, capture things that would not suit really faffing around with a pencil and rubber and it's good for an immediate line. So I'll show you which I use. There are several available and I quite like these Rotring Tiki Graphic pens at the moment and Unipin or another make that are quite easy to get hold of. They all come with different line thicknesses this is my usual favourite, which is a 0.2, which is a good general purpose, quite fine one. You can also get 0.5, which is a bit fatter. What else is that? 0.1, which is even finer. And sometimes I use these Sharpie pens. They're the fine Sharpies, not the big chunky ones. So they can be quite good just for just getting it down very expressive marks so what I'm going to show you is I'm going to try and recreate a little sketch I did when I was sailing um, at the end of last year this is a little pen sketch with watercolour on it that I did while we were at sea um, in the South Pacific heading for Cape Horn so you can see it was quite rough and I must have done this on a very moving deck in some challenging conditions. So I'm probably going to find it hard to do now on a warm studio with a table that's not moving. But I'll try and recreate the quick way that you can actually get something and get an impression down as an experience. I'm using watercolour paper because this book had quite nice watercolour paper in it. It's a moleskin brand book and it was quite nice to use. So let me see what I can do. I've taken this one from my imagination. Obviously, I was on the boat, so I just did this out of my head. Just to recreate a feeling, I think. Right, starting with the hull. I start very lightly, just with very light lines, just in case I get it wrong and I can keep correcting before committing to anything. The straight stem. So that's the line of the hull, and then I want to get the position of the masts. So I just put little dots where I think they might be, and then start to get them in very lightly. That's probably about right. And when you're more confident, you then strengthen up the lines that you've got. We had two sails flying at that time, which one was a stall, one was a staysail, and I think we were also trying out the storm jib. The storm trysail, sorry, there we go. So moving the furled. If you don't draw boats, it doesn't matter. You can apply this technique to anything else at all, even objects around the house. So gradually strengthening up your lines, starting to bring it into focus. An important aspect of a boat at sea is the way the waves affect the shape of the hull and the way they go past the boat. So what that left me there was a nice big wedge of dark there. But the bow came out beyond that wave. So we want to show the stuff on the deck without going into too much detail. A few hints of people, stuff going on. A little bit of a hint of rigging, but nothing too heavy on this scale. You're really suggesting things, and most of it's happening in your head. There's no room for detail. It's quite a small sketch. That's pretty much there, and I want the line of the sea. I'm not, not doing a heavy outline, because that's not what it needs. Just trying to get the feeling of movement these waves. 
think they were probably all over the place at that stage, which is why we were running around so much. See, that's, that's enough for now. You can always add more lines later. But that's enough to give it a bit of structure. Now I can add some colour. This is my plate palette. When I'm out and about, obviously, I use a small paint box, but the colours I carry are the same. What colours did I use? I can't remember, but let's try some indigo, some ultramarine, and a little bit of red. Lots of water. So what I've got is just, I'm tinting the drawing, really. I'm not painting. I'm actually just like putting filters on the lens of a camera. I'm just colouring the page. I don't want to, I want to go right over the sea because the colours of the sky are always in the sea. I want to be very careful when I go around the sails because I don't want them covered up. And all you have to do, you don't have to go to a smaller brush, this is a number six. I can just slow it right down and poke that paint around the lines. And then speed up again. As I'm getting into the sea colours, I'm putting a bit of yellow in. That's it, changing from blue to yellow. Skipping it across the page to leave some light patches. That's something similar. That's the kind of thing I was doing. So that's obviously, there's more paint to go on there when that's dry. That's just enough to show you how few lines you need to actually express something going on a moment in time without worrying too much about fiddly detail or rubbing out. I'm going to leave that to one side to dry. I've got one I did earlier that should now be dry. I did smudge a bit there, but it doesn't matter. That background is now dry, so I can add more to the sea. build it up a bit. You don't need a lot. There's big waves in at the back. Again, because I was there on the spot, I was actually able to see what the shapes and the patterns were, but I'm having to imagine it now, but that's good. kind of thing I can always go back on with more. I can add more lines, more colour later just to bring it into focus. And I can work a little bit more on the boat which looks like it needs a little bit more colour on the deck. I want to make it look like it's a solid object in the middle of all this fluid moving air and water. Naples yellow, that lovely chalky yellow, looks like that. It's a brilliant colour for traditional boats because it's the colour of the sails, it's the colour of the paint on the deck. And it makes a nice grey when mixed with blue. So that's the, that's the kind of thing that's coming on. And you don't, don't really need too much else. But then when that's dry, you might go back in with the pen and touch a few things up. But don't put the pen in when it's wet or else you'll spoil the nib. But I hope that gives an idea of how spontaneous and useful and confidence building these little pens can be. And uh, give it a go and let me know how you get on. Thanks. Bye.